The process of examining the movie and figuring out where the sound and music are going to go is called spotting. Sometimes we do that with the director and we walk away from that spotting session with specific instructions about what to do. Sometimes the director has used a temp score to edit to, and because the movie was edited to a piece of music at 131 beats a minute, that's probably what the director is expecting back from you. Well, let's pretend we have free reign here. We can do whatever we want. We're not imitating anything. We didn't get any creative guidance. We're not following orders. This may never happen again, so let's make the most of it. So first thing I'm going to do is switch from bars and beats to time code. Time code is a better measure in video than minutes and seconds. Minutes and seconds is okay for radio, but time code gives us hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. It's more accurate than minutes and seconds. So that's generally what we use. I'm going to go to the window menu and pull up the big counter. And that too is in SMPTE. If it weren't, I could change it over here on the right with this arrow. This will allow me to scrub through the movie. So I can do this in a variety of ways. This is sort of my favorite way to do it. Let's watch the little movie. Move our counter out of the way here. Let's try and get the movie over this way. So here's the movie. So a little something happens there, 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 and there. That would be nice maybe if the music did something to catch those. And we're out. So it would be nice to have little markers up here to tell us where those things happen so that we can line them up with audio. And we can do that. Meanwhile, notice that if I'm over here in the timeline, that sort of makes my point about where do those graphics really occur. This block of video up here doesn't really help me that much for that. So let's go ahead and hide that track. Now we still have the movie viewer open, but we don't have that big pink block of video up there to kind of get in our way. Let's put markers where things happen. So this isn't really a distinctive video event here, this type coming on. It might just want to have some evolving sound there. But right about here, there is an event. So now we need to talk about are they events or is it more of a process? Is it a moment in time that can be measured by a frame, like a ball hitting a bat and then it's over? Or is it more of a whoosh thing? In this case, it's more of a evolving little effect. And the other three that follow are the same way. So then the question is, do we put our marker at our first awareness of light? Or do we put it kind of in the middle? Or do we put it when it's actually complete? My philosophy is to put it toward the beginning but not actually the very first frame of light. You don't want your effect to be real heavy right there. You sort of want it to be heavier about there. I think I would tend to put it about 715. Now, this is a handy button when you're trying to get your timeline to follow your playhead. I'm going to view markers, and I'm going to create a marker right there. I'm going to call this timeline because that's the name of it. That's what it says down here in the video. I'm going to make this an absolute marker. We'll cover this in a few minutes when I get them all made. I just want it to be a marker, and marker number one is fine. Then I'm going to scroll ahead to my awareness of the second event and make a marker there and call this clip, because that's what it says in the text. This one's called SMPTE, somewhere about there. Another marker, SMPTE. Now, if you're working on a numeric keyboard, the one on the very right side of your QWERTY keyboard, you can hit the Enter key over there and make these markers. And you can make them on the fly. Let me try and make one on the fly for the next one. Let's go like this and... Okay, so frame, F-R-A-M-E. And what I want to show you about markers is that you can move them once you've made them. So let's say I didn't absolutely nail that part. I would line it up. If you make a marker that you don't like and you want to get rid of it, drag it off the timeline. It becomes a little trash can and it's gone forever. Let's make a marker that's here between clip and SMPTE. And this time, instead of an absolute marker, let's make a bar and beat marker. We'll call this B and B for bar and beat. 
Notice it has a different kind of icon. It's shaped more like a baseball home plate than a diamond. And here's how this works. If I go to Window and Transport and change the tempo, notice that the bar and beat marker is moving around and the SMPTE markers, or the absolute markers, are not. A bar and beat marker is used to mark the chorus and the pre-chorus and the guitar solo and the intro and the outro and pieces of a song that refer not so much to points in time, but to points in the structure of the song. Absolute markers are not going to change when you change the tempo of the music, because our next step in this scoring process is to decide which tempo of the music will help me hit these cuts in a musical and non-cartoony way, and I don't want these markers to move around every time I change the tempo. Now, because we know we can delete markers, I'm going to delete this bar and beat marker. And there's one last marker that I want to make. It would be back here as the movie fades out. That's sort of my last frame of video right there. So 1920, we'll call it 20 flat. I'm going to make another marker there. We'll call this EOP, end of picture. And that way I know that my music needs to be out by there. There's no point in dragging the music on after the movie has faded to black. So markers are in place. Now we get to decide what kind of music works with this. And we'll do that in the next movie.